Hello everyone, this is uh, Shad Reis from CVI 2022 in Denver, Colorado. I'm really privileged today to be with uh, Liz Perpetua. She is the founder of Empath uh, Health Services as well as she is the professor of research at uh, Seattle Pacific University. Liz, nice to see you. It's great to see you yeah. too, Shadi. I, I know what you are doing and the programs you're putting together mm -hmm. and the presentation you're giving at CVI. Yes. This is all about innovation and what you are doing really innovative in this uh, tough times of finding resources. Yes. So one of the specialty, and I like what you are doing in optimizing care for patients for structural heart. Mm -hmm. Please uh, fill us in on what you are doing and how's your team doing it. Yeah, thank you. So, you know, it's very interesting, right? Because COVID really gave us the opportunity to shine a light on our programs yeah. and ask ourselves whether what we're doing is working. Mm -hmm. And even when we started our structural heart programs, I started taking care of patients with structural heart disease going back to 2006 when I was at Swedish Medical Center and then later at University of Washington. And really, we had all kinds of different capacity constraints. Right, something with space or staff or supplies. And we were bringing all these innovations in technology, but we also needed innovation in care delivery. Yes. And so what that meant was we really needed the full team. Yes. So we think of the heart team, right, as the interventional cardiologist, the cardiac surgeon. Now we think of also the interventional echocardiographer, but we have also cardiac anesthesiology and right. so on. There's also, right, four million nurses in the United States. There are so many advanced practice providers, so nurse practitioners, physician assistants, yeah. and then all of the other people who touch the care of these patients. Right. So we have to be able to have clinical care pathways that get patients through the evaluation, treatment if it's indicated, and to do it in a safe and efficient way that feels good, right? Has yeah. a good experience right. for patients and for the team, but also has great outcomes. And now with COVID and any other kind of Everything capacity is constraint, we also need something that is going to be nimble and also allows for access. Yes. And that's been very challenging. So yeah, and, and to your point, we there's a few programs in the United States lost their structure program yes. because of that hiccup that happened during COVID, staffing, resources, mm -hmm. patient not showing up. So yes. having this pathway again restructured and with the good team that is trained to have this care delivered properly is important. Yes, you're absolutely right. And what we saw, so in my work, I've had the opportunity to work with about 20 different health systems and optimizing their care pathways, either on the um, you know, side of clinical trials or on the side of their you know, FDA approved commercial you know, therapies, their typical clinical care pathways. Right. And really the hope is that there's one front door, right? For patients to just get the care they need and to be evaluated and treated. But when we had so many different shortages, you know, with staff or, you know, maybe it was space or um, time, right, in the procedural areas because staff's not there or right. can't come in or whatever was furloughed or maybe, you know, deployed to another area. And we've even seen this now, right, with the contrast shortage. Yeah. So what did that mean for CAT scans or cath lab procedures? So you never know when you're going to evolve. Gonna no, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So the the teams that really doubled down on communicating mm -hmm. and then being also innovative still in how they could solve problems yeah. and really do that together. So, you know, um, during the Advanced Practice Provider Symposium here at CVI, um, Dr. Marcus Burns, one of my colleagues at um, Alina Health, right, Abbott Northwestern, he was able to present on um, their uptake and their adoption of nurse-led sedation, which is something that um, one of my dear friends and colleagues, uh, Dr. Trisha Keegan and the team over at Emory have been doing since 2011. Nice. So same day discharge, lots of different other innovations and in care yeah. delivery came through because what, of COVID. Yeah, one of the things I wanted to ask you on is as an educator sure. and as a healthcare provider and has been in the trenches doing the work, mm -hmm. When you have this, you lose a good nurse practitioner or a good Gosh. nurse, How? what's your pathway to teach them to get to, from being a holding room for exam nurse, mm -hmm. all the way to become a structural heart nurse? Yeah, so you know, you, you raise such a good point because for a nurse practitioner, if there's turnover, in my experience, what we've seen is this can, you know, cost an organization anywhere from two hundred fifty to three hundred thousand dollars if there's a turnover of a of oh. a nurse practitioner. So really, having that strong onboarding and orientation is key. And you know, we're still learning what is you know that 
education training and, and previous experience, you know, that supports the best, right, kind of um, pathway from a novice, right, structural heart nurse practitioner to a proficient or even what we might feel is expert, which it's hard to call any of us expert when the field is always evolving and changing all yes, the time, yes. right? But, but at least the foundation is there. A hundred percent. And really, you know, the um, American College of Cardiology now has clinical competencies that were published in 2020. Right. And a number of um, advanced practice providers were able to contribute to and lead that document to say, here's the knowledge, skills, abilities, and competencies that are needed. And that includes in the areas of valvular heart disease, congenital heart disease, heart failure, electrophysiology, because structural heart touches all, right, of those disease states and conditions. Right. And the nurse practitioners, physicians, assistants, we have to know how to, right, assess, diagnose, plan the care, manage, and also just provide that um, seamless care, the efficiency of that across the entire team and the care continuum from referral to follow up. Follow up. Yes. The patient goes home. Well, yes. we need at least uh, 200 Liz Perpetua in the United States right now to build this program back again, put it on track. Liz, thanks so much for your time and Thank for your you. input and for all the hard work you're doing with your team. Uh, okay. Please watch this team, uh, this video and others on <laughs> CVI uh, YouTube channel. This is Shadi Reyes from Denver, Colorado. Liz, thanks so much. Oh, thank you so much.